Hey, Marky here with another video. I haven't really planned to do videos today and I'm not really kind of scrubbed up. Uh, so the last couple of videos I've shot, I've kind of given you a bit of a view into the, the distance. Um, but I've had to take refuge in the shade because it's a bit hot. Uh, and uh, there's no ozone here, so it's very easy to kind of get burnt. So I've gone into the shade and uh, I don't really want to give you a view of a wall or in through his neighbor's window, even though there's nobody there at the moment. Uh, so uh, you've kind of got a view of me waltzing along. <laughs> uh, in my uh, Pac-Man Cookie Monster t-shirt. So normally I'm a little bit more formal you know, when I present these videos. So please excuse my informality. So this is another video in a retroactive jealousy series. Uh, so as some of you will know, uh, I run a practice called retract.com, uh, which is clinical treatment for retroactive jealousy. Uh, the reason it's called retract, uh, kind of three, three reasons to that really, is uh, the R-E-T-R, the -E it's, so it's spelled R-E-T-R hyphen and then capital A-C-T. So the ret, obviously, for the retroactive jealousy, the retroactive, you know, that side of things, and the A, uh, making the word act, is really important because recovery from retroactive jealousy requires lots of action uh, you know it's not a passive process it's not that you can just kind of talk to somebody and it will be made nice again you have to really work at it so it requires action uh, so retract.com which is also the name of the website so the name of the website and the name of the practice are one and the same so the i don't need these earphones in do i have those in because i was going to listen to some music and end up doing a video instead so uh, this is a kind of tentative video. This is just me sharing some thoughts and I'd be really interested to hear what you guys think about this. Uh, research into retroactive jealousy is pretty non-existent. There is some research taking place now, uh, some academic research, which is great. Uh, I'll probably do another video on that maybe at some point. But up till now, we haven't got any research. We, don't, we only have anecdotal information. Um, so we have lots of questions and lots of guesses and stuff like that. One of the things I wanted to talk about, this is the kind of the, uh, about the mindset uh, of people with retroactive jealousy and kind of where it comes from. And this kind of ties in with, we've got some free background music from some, I think there's an event on in town actually, so they're playing some music. So if this music is audible, I, I think it would be really unfair if anybody were to hammer me for copyright because I'm a passive recipient of this music. <laughs> so this is going to be one of those videos. Bear with me. Sit comfortably and make yourself a cup of tea. <laughs> so you may or may not have heard of uh, a movement of people who refer to themselves, themselves as incels. I-N-C-E-L. They've come more to prominence recently uh, for some pretty horrible reasons uh, because members of the incel movement are committed, I think there's been two or three uh, mass murders followed by suicide, although suicide was probably their primary intention um, with the goal of taking, taking other people with them. So if you've not heard of, of incels, there's lots of sources on this. You can it's like There is a Wikipedia page on incels as well. So incels kind of started innocently enough with a woman uh, who was a university student who, uh, for various reasons, uh, wanted, wanted sex but, but was, uh, was single and celibate. And she called herself an involuntary celibate and started posting a blog about it. I believe it was on Reddit. Uh, but then the name kind of got hijacked a little bit further down the line, mainly by men. And uh, it was a group of men, really, who were very embittered and disenfranchised. So guys that felt that they, uh, they weren't getting any sex were, and weren't happy about it. And some of the kind of the uh, beliefs and philosophies and views of uh, people from the incel movement are is an anger, a belief that women are uh, shallow and fickle uh, and will uh, be over-influenced by physical attractiveness and will be, uh, or uh, success, or um, you know, outward qualities, and will uh, will tend to have sex with uh, with everybody but but them and their like. <laughs> so um, 
and this is where the kind of murderous intent kind of is, is kind of, this is where the murders have, have kind of come into this. There's a real anger uh, against women, a real misogyny, uh, and some, you know, some incels will, you know, advocate rape and, and things like that. So it's quite a dark movement, really. Although I'm sure that there are different degrees. I'm sure if we were to, you know, talk to some incels, they might they might paint quite a different picture. But that certainly is part of the incel movement. You know, that that is a, a, a an element of it. So, this is where I think it's helpful to bring in uh, a little bit of another bit of psychology. And again, this this isn't something that, that I believe is evidence based. This is so this is a bit of popular psychology. Uh, I think there's a lot in it. I think it's quite a useful model for looking at the world. Uh, I like to kind of say where things are evidence based and where they're not. Um, I could go off on a big tangent about how valuable an evidence base is anyway because I think psychology is not a hard science but it pretends to be a hard science but we'll save that for another video so alphas and betas okay um, a categorization for different types of men okay now before we cause any major kind of uh, confusion and even further controversy uh, we're talking about the Greek alphabet here, alpha being A and beta being B, not beta as in somebody who beats people, okay, alpha and beta. So uh, a lot of psychology, and this has mainly come from uh, the, the pickup movement, which has its controversies and uh, also has, I think, you know, some quite useful things to, to teach us. There's different degrees, you know, different kind of... Um, different movements within that within that group but they talk a lot about alpha males and beta males now alpha males are dominant uh, quite aggressive uh, and they have kind of quite strong leadership qualities and the theory that would go that would come from this particular movement not the incel movement but from the pickup movement is that uh, on a biological level and this is kind of this would kind of fit with evolutionary psychology is that women are tend to be sexually aroused by alpha males okay um, and it would kind of make sense if you look at it from the evolutionary kind of point of view because these are people that are strong uh, you know that decisive uh, so they're the kind of people that would keep you safe you know a strong leader that would keep you from being eaten by wild animals and would probably be a good hunter and would be able to provide and would probably be able to scare off anybody that's likely to to, to do you any harm so the theory is that that women are attracted to alphas sexually attracted to alphas um, the downside of alphas is often they are assholes <laughs> so qualities like sensitivity <laughs> aren't necessarily always on on the um, on, uh, in abundance in alphas so women find them sexually attractive uh, but actually uh, they don't they don't actually make good partners certainly not in modern society perhaps in ancient times they probably they probably did but in the, the modern world they they don't because they're not very sensitive they're not you know, particularly thoughtful or kind people they're very you know they can be very arrogant they don't have to be but this is you know this is often the qualities that that go that go with it so you don't have to be an asshole if you're an alpha but often they go together so you know often you hear women say you know oh why are all the men that are attracted to you know assholes um, now there are also beta guys. Beta guys again, they don't, they don't beat people. In fact, often the opposite. Often very gentle, more sensitive. They're the guys that don't get the girl. <laughs> so there are a lot of bitter beaters out there. Um, but what tends to happen is that beaters are husband material. <laughs> so uh, so you know when a woman's kind of um, you know uh, in their younger younger maybe more sexually active years is, is attracted to alphas. Uh, maybe has a few relationships with alphas and realizes that you know that's really not good they will eventually kind of uh, draw more to men who they recognize as more um, emotionally literate and more sensitive uh, less dominant more you know uh, you know more sense of equality um, all those kind of qualities and they're the ones that they tend to marry and settle down with so again, none of this is evidence-based. This is all theoretical, and you can argue with me on this. You might be able to present evidence that this isn't the case, and I'd be interested to. But but go with the theory. Cause this is just about thinking. This is just a starting point for some thought. Really, this isn't me kind of telling you how it is. This is just sharing some ideas for discussion. However, this video has got to a certain length, so I'm going to pause it here, and we're going to go into a part two, and we are going to talk about. We're going to get into the nitty-gritty of what is the connection between 
potentially the connection between men with retroactive jealousy, or some men with retroactive jealousy, betas and incels, and is there a connection? And what are the overlaps? So that's what we're going to get back, get into in part two. So for now, Rangimaye.